Hi there, and thank you for spending the time today to see this best practice webinar. Today we're going to be looking at how to configure antivirus scanning alongside with the APT blocker. Now the APT blocker stands for Advanced Persistent Threat Scanning. And that is things like zero day viruses, targeted attacks, and things like CryptoLocker. Okay, so let's get started. I already have a feature key installed on this device, and that allows me to use the subscription services such as the AV and the APT blocker. I have some HTTP and HTTP proxies in place already. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a new one, like so. I'm just gonna leave the basics on here, any trusted to any external, that's fine for this example. I'm gonna go into my proxy actions, and we wanna go ahead and we wanna configure the antivirus scanning. Now, there is a wizard under the subscription services menu, which you could also run. So again, subscription services menu, gateway antivirus, and then you can click on activate, and you can run through this wizard. But I don't really want to do that. I wanna go through and do it manually so I can show you guys all of the different options. So I'm gonna go ahead and create myself my HTTP proxy rule. I'm gonna edit my proxy actions. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the, bot, the policy exactly what to scan. And the two things you're interested in are content types and body content type. First one being the content type. So in this list here, we are saying that we can have plain text, images, audio, flash, Java. And if you look down the bottom here, my actions say, if it's in the list, it's allowed. If it's not in the list, it's allowed, which is okay it means we can get to basically everything. But that doesn't mean it's secure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this view, and now I'm gonna edit these actions individually and give them their own permission set. So for example, PDF, that can contain a virus. So I'm gonna double click on that to edit it, and I'm gonna change that to AV scan. And when I change this to AV scan, I also definitely wanna tell that to log. So if, as, and when it finds a virus, I can see it in my traffic monitor log. Same for Java. Well, Java basically is a virus, right? So we'll definitely AV scan that one. Flash, yes, okay, Flash is the same. Let's AV scan him as well. Along with things like applications, obviously an application can contain a virus. Now, if it's not in this list, it's gonna hit the default action down here below. And because it's not in the list, it's not going to be plain text or audio or pictures. So I don't know what it is. So again, I'm gonna tell that to AV scan too. You may occasionally stumble across this one, which is a none type, a none content type. And that is literally where the developers of the content have not specified what it is. It could be a picture, but it could be plain text, it could be an application. Literally, we have no idea what it is because there's no description. So I'm gonna allow it, that's fine, but obviously I'm gonna tell that to AV scan because for all I know, it could be a PDF with a virus and they just haven't specified it's PDF. So we're gonna go through there like that. The next thing we're gonna go down to is body content type. And then it's here where, where we specify what we can and can't download via the web browser. And again, we're saying if it's in this list up here, it's gonna be denied. If it's not in the list, it's allowed. But you see some of these are grayed out. And that's because if I change this view, you will see that Java and zip and cabs, although they're set to deny, they're not ticked. So actually, they're not going to be denied. They're gonna hit this default action down here, which is allow. So I have a choice. If I wanted to AV scan zip files, I could double click on there and change that from deny to AV scan log and then tick it. Or what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna say, well, everything else down here, which is set to allow anyway, let's change that to AV scan. So everything gets scanned. And then I can simply just remove the zip from up here. So now we're saying XEs is going to be denied. Java isn't going to be denied. It's going to be AV scanned. Now, as we go further down, the, uh, the list here on the left, you will see we have antivirus. And when we look into here, this is where we can handle uh, what happens when we find the virus. So when a virus is detected, it's gonna be dropped. And I, I don't really recommend you change that, if I'm honest, but let me show you the other options. Obviously you could set it to allow, which would be a foolish thing to do. You could also set it to block. Now notice when you put it to block, you're gonna drop the connection like above, 
but then you're going to take the sender's IP address and you're going to add them to the block list for 20 minutes. So I would use that one with great caution because it is quite a powerful tool. Personally, I leave it to drop. Now a scan error, this could be a password protected zip file, um, password protected PDF, it could be a corrupt file. Either way, the AV engine cannot scan it for whatever reason. And it's up to you whether or not you allow that connection to come through or you choose to drop it. Personally, I'm going to drop it. I, I prefer to fail safe. Now below that we have the scan limit. And this is how far into the connection we will scan. And you see there we have one meg specified in this config, which is the default for this box that I'm on. Now, scenario, you're downloading a 500 meg ISO file from a particular website. We're only going to scan the first meg. Now, the reason we only do that is because if I was writing a virus, I want to put that virus right at the beginning of that connection. So as soon as you try to download that file, you actually get the malware before you get the file. I wouldn't want to put it in the middle or at the end because if something happens and you don't download the file, you probably didn't get the malware. So we only need to scan a certain part at the beginning of the file or connection to identify what's happening. So a meg there, a meg there is pretty good. That's quite a nice number to have. It's not going to affect performance too much. I'm going to make you aware of this next option down here as well, reputation enable defense. Now, I'm only going to make you aware of this. This is a, a different feature altogether, but it does kind of tie into antivirus scanning. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if something has a bad reputation, we'll block it. But then down here, we can say if something has a good reputation, we can actually choose to bypass the antivirus scanning. Now, if you're using 11.10 update 2 or above, this is fine. By all means, continue to bypass your antivirus scanning because at this point, it will still um, hit the APT blocker. Prior to this version, if you choose to bypass antivirus scanning, it would also bypass the APT blocker, and we don't want to do that. And I'm going to move on to that one in a moment and show you why. But just a quick, a quick recap on the reputation enable defense. Every website you go to will be scored from 0 to 100. 0 to 10 is clean, like Google... BBC, things like that. And for those ones, I can choose to bypass the AV scanning. Now, when I bypass AV scanning, I'm bypassing it for the things I've just configured in this previous menus. So Java, Flash, PDF, applications, and such like. All of that stuff will not be AV scanned if it has a good reputation. Now, if it scores 11 to 89, it will be AV scanned. And then based on those results or whether or not you can get to that web page, anywhere from 90 to 100 is a bad reputation and we cut the connection so you can't get to it. And again, we're going to log that to make sure you can see it actually happen. Right, let's move on to the APT blocker. So the Advanced Persistent Thread Scanner. Let me uh, just OK out of this menu for a moment. Yeah, let's leave some feedback. That's fine. <clears throat> I'm going to OK out of here because I want to show you it under the subscription services menu first. So down the bottom of the list is the APT blocker. Now we come in here and it's really easy to configure. You tick it. Uh, you're going to want to set all of your actions to drop if they're not already. So even a low threat because ultimately this is finding things that AV can't find. So you definitely want to make sure it's set to block. I'm also going to choose alarm. Now, by doing this and assuming I have a dimension report server and everything's configured correctly, I can go down to notifications and I can send it, uh, set it to send me an email notification. So when any of these threat level happens, it's going to alarm, which then sends me an email notification. Under policies, I can see my relevant proxies, which I have uh, with the APT on there. So I can go in there and I can turn those on. But I'm going to go ahead and do that on the rule in a minute. So I'm going to leave that as it is for now. And then also under advanced, again, from this very latest version 11.10.2, if you guys do have an on-premise sandbox solution, you can choose to point this device to your on-premise box. Okay, so that's all there is to it. It's really easy for the APT. The next thing I go ahead and do is I go to my rule, back into my proxy actions, APT blocker, and I tick it. It's as simple as that. Now, the way this works, is when a file comes in, it's gonna we're going to take a digital fingerprint of the file, 
and we're going to check it against a local cache on the box. If it's a bad file and it matches, we block it. If it doesn't match, we then check that fingerprint against the cloud service database, which is huge. If it matches, we block it. If it doesn't match there, then that means that this particular file has never been seen by anybody in the world. It's brand new. It's new to you. And you, you're at this point, let's be frank, you're quite unfortunate because you've received a zero day virus before anyone else in the world has even seen it. But it does happen. In that scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to take a copy of that file and we're going to send that up to the cloud service and we're going to run it in a third generation sandbox where we're going to emulate that file in a, a live environment and we're going to see what happens. We're going to learn about its behavior and based upon the results of that, we're then going to notify you if that's a bad file. That sounds all really intensive and time consuming. You're going to get the results back from that test within 15 minutes. So that's pretty good going. Now, bear in mind, things like CryptoLocker can actually sit on your machine for maybe a week learning about your behavior before it actually jumps out to do what it's got to do. So within 15 minutes, it's generally, um, you know, it's a small enough window for you to be able to do what you need to do. Now, by turning on the APT blocker here, when things are AV scanned, they're going to be APT scanned. Now, there is a scan limit size with the APT. Uh, so what we can do is go back to our AV engine and where we're scanning one meg into the file, we can choose to scan eight meg now. And that means we're going to send files up to the size of eight meg to that cloud service, which is obviously much larger than you should, your traditional malware. So remember, if you're using the APT blocker, make sure you come in here and increase your scan size limit to eight meg. So a very quick recap then. The antivirus, I've told it to AV scan, the certain things which can actually contain viruses, Java, Flash, zip files, whatever it is I need to do. Under antivirus, I'm going to drop my connections. Then under reputation enabled defense, I've personally chosen to bypass AV scanning for good reputations. But as mentioned, only do that if you're on version 10, uh, sorry, 11.10.2. Uh, anything prior to that, do not have that one ticked. Onto the APT blocker, under subscription services, I have it enabled, everything set to drop. Personally, I've had everything set to alarm because if I do get some advanced malware hit my network, even though I've blocked it, I still want to know about it so I can see where it originated from. So that, that way, I've set up my email notification. And then within my, pol my policy, my HTTP rule, I've gone ahead and enabled the uh, APT blocker there. Now, there is only one more thing I want to check before we go. And again, that's sub subscription services, gateway antivirus, configure. And the reason I want to come in here is a couple of reasons, really. The first one is this. You'll see that the rule I've just created, antivirus is enabled. But for my existing proxy rules, AV is actually disabled. So I want you guys to always make sure you come in here and check that. So I can simply select all and enable and now AV scanning will be applied to all of my proxy rules. The other thing I want to check is this one down here. So when I hit settings, this is not ticked by default. Now, the scan level, this is basically saying, look at zip files. If I have this unticked, I will identify that there's a zip file being downloaded or coming in over email, but I will not look inside the zip. If I tick this, I will now look at zip inside a zip inside a zip. So you definitely want that ticked. And then finally, update server. This is something, again, which is commonly overlooked. This is not turned on by default. So you'd want to come in here, enable the automatic updates for every hour, and make sure you tick all of the relevant subscription services that you have on your device. So that's it, guys. That shows you how to configure the AV and the, and the APT blocker. I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to drop me an email uh, or uh, drop us uh, an email to the uh, UK sales at watchguard.com and we'll be happy to oblige. I'll speak to you guys again real soon.